Good. Anyway, I hope you remember that uh, the structure of uh, this course. We started uh, with definition, the key terms of the evaluation of long uh, trajectory of formation of world economy. This was the first. We defined a time, space, the concept of world economy system, euro, and the basic concept. The second one, I tried to uh, uh, analyze how unfolded uh, economic uh, uh, integration in Europe because to the global world the basic item which organized and occupied whole of the world, whole of the earth, whole of the civilization started from Europe. Therefore, very important to understand evolution of European economy before the occupation of and forming of global world economy. And the first integration, I hope you remember, if somebody didn't participate, you can read in the handout or uh, listening and reading on the uh, video records of, the, of my lecture on, the YouTube, of, on my YouTube channel. Uh, but you can select because some part of my, my, my presentation, Hungarian, other one, uh, English, but uh, with help of the title, it's very easy to separate. Okay, and very useful to switch on the subtitle because the majority of the audience, including me, never a uh, uh, never, uh, native speaker. Therefore, we, in my case anyway, but the majority of the students, learn language with the text, with help of the text. Therefore, understanding uh, by listening is not so easy, not so easy, because there are a lot of different dialects. Uh, Central European dialects, which I speak, and Indian dialect, and a lot of, a lot of different dialects. Therefore, I suggest you switch on the subtitle and have a lot. Okay, anyway, the first phase of European integration was a bipolar integration. Bipolar. What mean? A southern polar and the southern pole and the northern pole. And between the northern pole, it means low country, recent uh, more or less Belgium and the Netherlands, and the southern pole and northern Italy. This was the main axis of European uh, medieval economy. The second phase and the first leading city was Venice. In the last lecture, I spoke about how integrated and how monopolized a uh, spice trade and distribution of the spice, which was the most important luxury trade in the Middle Ages. How integrated and monopolized by Venice, and how constructed a trading system which, ab which was able to direct whole of European economy for more than one century. And this was the last slide. This is the stock of exchange. It's open air stock of exchange because in the Mediterranean climate, during summer half year, very low frequency of rain, of precipitation. Therefore, the broker and the businessman uh, with the notebook, not a recent uh, computer, it's a notebook, this is a paper based notebook, wall on the square of San Giacometto. Okay, uh, sorry. But I hope you remember the crisis of the 14th century, crisis of the Black Death, crisis of uh, a great disaster, the greatest disaster of European uh, uh, social history and European generally, the European history when one-third of European population disappeared in consequence of great bubonic plague. It was a huge crisis, a huge crisis. And the nature and the behavior of the crisis all more or less was and are the same, were and are the same. Look at, for example, uh, probably the majority of the audience economists came from the Faculty of Economics. Who came from the majority? Okay. Uh, probably you know uh, the deepest crisis of the 20th century 
the crisis between 1929 uh, 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 to uh, 33. This was the deepest crisis of the 20th century. And after uh, uh, this crisis of the 20th century, which policy, which economic policy used and applied by contemporary government? It was the great state investment, governmental investment. Probably you know the name of Keynes, of Keynes, it's American uh, economics. Keynes. He was the prophet of governmental investment and heating of economy by uh, state investment. And very interesting, in the 14th century, economists and, uh, pol uh, uh, and the politician of Venetian Republic, politician of Venice, used the same policy. Which was the most important economic activity of Venetian Republic? Spice trade, a spice trade, but for the merchants and the businessmen, not enough money for organizing a spice trade. Therefore, a government of Venice, both the Arsenal, Arsenal, not a football team, not a football team in London. Arsenal, this was the greatest the biggest uh, factory of shipbuilding on the contemporary Europe. Founded in 1104, and in this factory, the arsenal, it was it's, uh, in the arsenal, the main uh, activity was the shipbuilding, but the main uh, arms and a lot of uh, industrial devices. But arsenal, both, by Venetian government and constructed huge number of galleys. It's a ships, it's a row of ships, you know, because it's a combined uh, two uh, devices of the of the uh, of the of the sailing, a sail and rowing. Rowing. It's a galley, probably you know this term. There is some picture, a contemporary picture about the galleys. Here there is the whole of the row, and this is the free mast and the sail. The state, both the arsenal, constructed huge number, huge number of galleys, which was the basic item of uh, distributive trade. And the Venetian merchant offered on low price for buying a flow of money. A uh, most important expense of international trade was the construction of great ships. These problems solved with help of uh, state and governmental investment. Uh, this system combined a state enterprise and private association. Therefore, the most important investment, the frozen stock, uh, financed by state. And this was the first step. State construction of uh, most important devices of international trade. And the second step, organizing a network of sailing. Uh, look at the next one. No, no, no next one. Sorry. Unfortunately, no. No, no, no slide about uh, uh, the direction of Galea de Mercato. Okay, uh, look, at the, uh, look at the system, the network of, of the system. It's function uh, like, for example, an uh, international bus channel. You know, for example, there is a lot of inter Somebody would like to travel to Madrid, to Venice, to Paris. It's possible using an international bus network. A uh, galleys of Mercato function a little bit similar man, a similar man, which is the most important peculiarity sailing on the Mediterranean Sea. Sailing on the Mediterranean Sea. Uh, the, one of the most important problems, it's very 
read devices of navigation. Therefore, if we are looking at the Mediterranean Sea, here, this is the Italian peninsula, uh, it's uh, continental area, Greece, and so on and so a uh, navigator of uh, Venice or Genoa or, or any other city-state try to organize a sailing very near to the coastal area. Why? Because the most important uh, strategy looking the coastal area. No uh, sailing far from the coastal area. Why? Because on that time, in the 14th century, very rare the magnetic compass. Therefore, the general mention, general slogan in the Mediterranean Sea that the sailor sleeping each night on the coast. And only on the daytime, on the a day say on the on the on the on the on the sea but not too far from the coastal area therefore it was really a coastal sailing this was the first one then the second one uh, uh, trading ships sail on fleet on fleet why because very high the danger danger of piracy in the eastern part of the Mediterranean Sea, Christian piracy. In the southern part of Mediterranean Sea, a Muslim piracy. Tun Tunis, for example, was the famous port of the Muslim uh, piracy. Okay, this was the two peculiarity. Therefore, the system of sailing, the trade, sa trade ships sailing, was on the fleet sailing. A uh, free uh, network of sailing, like, like a bus channel, organized a regular sailor, uh, regular sailing in the Mediterranean Sea. The first one, Galia da Mercato, it, it, the southern galleys, between Venice and, uh, uh, how the name is, uh, uh, Alexandria. Venice and Alexandria. This was the Galea de Mercato, regular network go and the back of galleys, of trading spice galleys. It's a Galea da Mercato, Galea da Mercato. The second one, Galea di Trafego, Galea di Trafego. Galia di Trafego connected Venice with the northern African ports. Northern African ports. It's westward from Alexandria. The most important uh, uh, products which imported from northern Africa to Venice was the African gold, African gold powder. A gold powder, it's, it's uh, um, mined in uh, Central Africa with help of caravan trade exported to the southern ports of Northern Africa. Therefore, it's not local, local mining, it's Central African mining, uh, it's a gold powder. And the third line of Galea da Mercato was Galea di Fiandra, Galea de Sen di Fiandra. Galea di Fiandra, it's a Flanders, Flanders, southern part of Low Country, southern part of, uh, of uh, recent Belgium. Recent Belgium. Why so important? Because Galea di Fiandra connected a Mediterranean and the northern trade via maritime trade, maritime trade. Why so important and great innovation? Because before the Galea di Fiandra, not, not, no other, only continental connection between Italy and uh, northern Atlantic coastal area of Europe. Okay, 
But for 100 years, one, one, uh, 100 years, one, 120 years long leading of European economy, uh, domination and monopoly of uh, Venice collapsed. Look at the reason of the collapse of uh, domination of Venice. The first problem for city-state, you remember, I hope, that number of inhabitants of Venice no more, only 150,000 dwellers. Compare with France, for example, on France, on the same time, the population estimate to 16 or 17 million. It's a dwarf and a monster, according to population. Uh, and after the crisis of 14th century, regenerated the territorial state like France, like Spain, and like England and uh, and, uh, 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 and uh, Germany too. The second strike of uh, for uh, Venetian Republic invasion of Osman in Ottoman Empire. Ottoman Empire. Very interesting the history of Ottoman Empire. Fortunately, there is a, a Turkish student because it's uh, very interesting because uh, some institution of uh, early. Ottoman Empire, very close, very close to the uh, Byzantine Empire, Eastern Roman Empire. Some institution is copied. Therefore, Ottoman Empire didn't construct uh, from the zero state, zero, ground zero, his empire, but integrated the experiences, uh, empire construction of, uh, of, uh, of uh, Byzantine Empire. And uh, for a long, long time, a uh, European politician thought that it's not dangerous because the Ottoman Empire is a continental empire. But step by step, the Sultan uh, occupied the Constantinople in the middle of uh, 15th century, Kaffa. You remember this was the uh, city uh, where started the infection of the, of the plague and the Black Death in the Crimean Peninsula, Syria, Egypt, and whole of southern part of, uh, of uh, southeastern part of Mediterranean Sea. And finally, the last and one of the most, Im and the most important reason of uh, collapse of Venetian dominance, Venetian monopoly, are geographical discoveries. Uh, we can, we, if we would like to recall which uh, uh, force, which nation participated in the geographical discoveries. The first two we can see, Portugal and Spanish discoveries. But my guess, which other nation participated in the geographical discoveries? In the early modern time, 16th and 17th century. Uh, Netherlands, yeah, it's a Dutch, it's a Dutch. Indonesia, for example, very important role of, uh, and the southern part of Africa founded uh, Cape Town and the uh, southern colony. Uh, Dutch is a third one, Portugal, and uh, Spaniard, uh, Dutch. English, French, and left one, at least. And Russia, Russia, but very important peculiarity of the Russian uh, colonization is not maritime colonization, not sailing, but the continental colonization of Siberia, <coughs> the continental colonization of Siberia, and very successful colonization because not only the continental uh, Siberia colonized, but uh, uh, vogue through the Bering Strait and occupied even Alaska. And probably you know the story that in the 60s of the 19th century, both back by American state. But originally, Alaska discovered and colonized by Russian troops. Okay, turn back to the story. 
the geographical discoveries started with Portugal and the Spanish uh, sailor, trader and merchant. Okay, change uh, slide series. The first question, which were the causes of geographical discoveries? Because it's very interesting, on the same time when a European started with the geographical discoveries, in China, in China started a little bit before the European geographical discoveries, a series of Chinese geographical discoveries. It's possible you know the name of, of uh, Zeng or Cheng Hu. Cheng Hu. No Chinese student. No Chinese. Okay. Cheng Hu. Somebody recent and uh, read about the Cheng Hu or Zeng Hu. No? Zeng Hu, a uh, very famous Chinese admiral. He was a Muslim. He was a Muslim according to religion. Very interesting because uh, Confucianism is very open. It's not, ex ex uh, not uh, uh, no ambition for, for exclusivity. In the Christian law and the Muslim world, the Muslim religion, it's no option to be believer or other religion. In the Confucianism, no problem. Somebody it's maybe Confucius, follower of the Confucianism, and Muslim. It's no problem. Zheng Ho or Chen Ho, he was the famous admiral who sailed from China to Africa and brought one giraffe to the emperor of the uh, China. And according to archaeological evidences, not only Africa sailed its longest way than say by Columbus to America, China to Africa. And the Chinese uh, Junkas, Chinese ships, sail to uh, Peru, to southern part of America, and back. But it's possible I told you about this story in the first uh, lecture, but the problem with the Chinese discoveries was it was a uh, governmental organized discoveries. Therefore, financed from governmental budget. And on the situation of finance, financial crisis, uh, cancel by imperial administration. Cancel all of the discoveries. But look at Europe. In Europe, the geographical discoveries became very successful operation political, uh, commercial, and, and civilization operation. Look at the causes of the European success compared with the uh, Chinese failure. The first uh, reason of the success of uh, uh, geographical, European geographical discoveries are continuation of reconquest. There is a Spain, uh, Spain, Spanish student? No? Spaniard? It's very important period of the uh, Spanish history that the Spanish history formed on the long process, medieval process of reconquest of Iberian Peninsula. Because on the early Middle Ages, uh, Muslim troops occupied whole of the Iberian Peninsula and founded the Cordovan Caliphates. It's very famous, high level of civilization performed in Iberian Peninsula. And on the boundary area of the Pyrrhon Mountains, organized a, a small Christian state, specialized to reconquest. It's a long story. It's a long story. Started in the uh, 8th century and closed in the 15th century. 700 years long story. In this situation, formed a very special society in Iberian Peninsula. Why? Because a normal Christian society, a proportion of nobility, a 
proportion of nobility, you know, this is the pyramid structure of medieval society, uh, at least uh, uh, 80 to 90 percent peasant, and 10 percent uh, maybe bourgeoisie, uh, nobility, aristocracy, and one person on the top of the pyramid, the king or emperor or, or prince, or, or not important. But look at the proportion of the nobility. Look at, for example, France. It's an ideal state of medieval uh, European uh, Christian city. The proportion of nobility in France, one person, one person, one person of society, nobleman, nobleman. Look at Spain or Portugal. The proportion of nobil nobility it's changed to 15 to 20 percent. Why? Why so hard? Because in France, the living standards and the life of nobleman and the noble family based on estate, estate, and the paid in taxes of serf, the peasants. In the case of uh, uh, Spain and the Portugal, the nobleman status, partly based on estate and partly based on military ser service. Why? Because a continuous, uh, continuously uh, performed military campaign, income of military campaign, were enough for nobleman status. Therefore, majority of noblemen lived from the fruit of war, which is the fruit of war, plundering, for example, and, uh, and uh, kill, uh, plundering, this is the most important, but, uh, uh, and, uh, and blackmailing, and uh, you know, you can imagine. Uh, therefore, a majority of Portuguese and the Spaniard noblemen, its basic interest, the continuous warfare. But the last Emirates in Iberian Peninsula occupied in 1492 and closed, closed the chess for continuous warfare which was the first idea of the Spaniard and the Portuguese soldier and the nobleman, continued the war in Northern Africa. But the state, Muslim state of Northern Africa, so strong, lost each battle against the Northern African state. Therefore, the most important uh, participants of the discoveries in the African coastal area and the uh, uh, American uh, invasion against the Aztec Empire, later Inca Empire, a professional soldier came from generation, long generation of families, soldier families, noble families, supported and offered the huge number of professional soldier for geographical uh, discoveries and formation of colonies. Okay, the look is the uh, second one. A Christian church, missionary ambition. A missionary ambition. It's a very important project of the Christian church, a proliferation, a proliferation of the Christian law. Not by chance, in the first travel of Columbus from uh, uh, Spain to uh, Central America, no monks, but on the second one, eight monks, eight monks saved. Uh, I remember Benedict monks saved from Spain to the New World. And the Christian church supported, very heavily supported. There is a famous movie, it's a quite old, uh, made in the 80s, I remember, or 90s, uh, starring with uh, Robert De Niro. This is the title, a mission, a mission. 
and uh, this is the movie about the first uh, Christian community formed in Central in Boli on the Brazil. I remember Christian church supporting with the political power and with the uh, financial power uh, first operation of the of the discoveries. A Turkish conquest, uh, Ottoman Turkish conquest, closed closed Eastern Mediterranean trade and uh, and therefore try to find a new way for the Spice Island. And finally, which I told to you in the former lecture, a precious metal hunger. A precious metal hunger means not nobody ate the precious metal, of course, but in Europe for uh, Asian trade, spice trade and other luxury trade, great silk road, for example, it's pushed out a precious metal to China and to uh, India. Therefore, in Europe, for long uh, term, whole of the Middle Ages, there, were, uh, there was a shortage of precious metal. Therefore, uh, introduced uh, artificial, model, artificial money, a paper which mentioned this value 100. It's a uh, how the name is, uh, uh, it's a bill of exchange, bill of exchange. It's a check somehow function. They wrote that the value of this paper 100 golden ducats. If the confidence between the trader is function, everybody accepts it. Even in the 14th century introduced artificial money. But shortage of precious metal is a great problem. And on that time, on the time of uh, geographical discoveries, introduced a uh, legend of El Dorado. You know, legend of El Dorado. Everything from gold. The leaves on the tree, the trunks of the tree, it's gold. Everything is a gold. This was the imagination, legend, finding the El Dorado. The poorest people became the richest one. A richest man of the of the universe, and uh, generations of uh, uh, conquistador motivated the legend of El Dorado. We would like to find the El Dorado, and everybody became a rich man. Okay, why is so successful European in the geographical discoveries? One of the most important conditions of the discoveries a technical innovation, a technical innovation introduced a new well-constructed uh, ships which was able to sail everywhere. It was the caravan, a caravan. The second one, a sailing system. A sailing system, it's very, very complicated and very efficient for Because no engine all the time, uh, and therefore each ship sailed by uh, sailing system. Canals and movable canals and movable muskets. Fire rovers. Former time, former lecture, I told to you that uh, gunpowder invented in China. But no such efficient evolution which performed uh, European context. Why? Because in China, so high density of population that organized a large and huge number army, much easier then invest to technical innovation. In Europe, where, in consequence of regional agriculture and local agriculture, no chance for perform high density of population. Therefore, for agricultural profile, for agric low agricultural efficiency, a European society is very open for technical innovation. And gunpowder, take to the side of the plate in Europe, integrate it, and develop, develop. Very dangerous using gunpowder. Somebody played with gunpowder? No? No? During my childhood, one of the most, uh, the best uh, play, uh, stealing uh, bullets uh, from, the, from the village, uh, uh, village uh, stock, and uh, very dangerous to open the bullets open the bullets. We played with our life, of course, uh, and, uh, uh, but it's, it was, uh, we, we made a, a fire, how the name, it's a, a fire play, and poor 
uh, gunpowder to the wrong place, wrong place, wrong side, and the people uh, during the night uh, walking at home and fine. It's very heavy to play, but very heavy to treat, but we enjoy it. Anyway, uh, it's very, very dangerous because the blowing up the, the bullets, it may kill everybody It's close to the bullets. Uh, but innovation, generation by generation, uh, constructed reliable canals and reliable muskets. And finally, the most successful Chinese innovation, a magnetic compass. A magnetic compass. Invented in China, but the great success performed in Europe. And arrived to Europe via Great Seal Road. Okay, the second one, scientific innovations. The travel and, uh, and, uh, uh, and the navigation. Scientized. Scientized mean it's gathering of information. For example, uh, it's uh, possible later I will, see, I will speak about the um, name of uh, Henry the Navigator. It's a famous uh, Portuguese prince. It's ga he gathered on his time from the logbooks, you know which is the logbooks, a diary of sailor, diary of captain. Consta uh, gathered from the uh, logbooks information about direction of wind and direction of ocean and the sea currents. And big data. This was the first big data revolution collecting of information about sail, uh, wind direction and ocean current direction. Uh, this is the age of, uh, of Renaissance. You know which is the Renaissance? Rebirth of antique uh, uh, of, uh, of, uh, uh, information and the culture of antiquity. And for example, translated the book of Julius Caesar about the military campaign in Gaul. And it's very great uh, invention because in the Middle Ages, no strategy, only two army and riding oppositely, in front of. And after translation of great uh, art of war guidebooks of antiquity, was born a scientized military operation. Military operation. Very difficult to imagine how organized a military campaign in the Middle Ages. I tell one story, for example, one rule of medieval army and medieval military operation. I don't know why, but in the Middle Ages, the general rule that the general of one army killed, his army escaped. It's possible, practically, this army won the battle. But according, according to custom, military custom, the main general killed, his army escaped. And the first battle, when the main general killed, and his army didn't escape from the battlefield, but continued this army, this uh, battle, and won this battle, happened on the time of 100, uh, uh, not uh, 30, 30 years war, more exactly 1632, it's a hundred, uh, 30 years of war, and it was the Swedish army, and his king, Gustav Adolf, killed at the beginning of the battle, but well-trained modern cavalry realized it well, the general killed, but we may continue the battle. Before this day, it's a custom -y. If the main general killed, escape, escape. I don't know why, but this is the influence of re rebirth and rediscovery 
of culture of antiquity and take into operation. Okay, look at the story. Movable cannons and portable muskets. And other important innovation of the 16th century, upvaluation of infantry. Upvaluation of infantry. Why so important? Because infantry, a walking soldier, it's very cheap. Because in the Middle Ages, the army very, very expensive. Why? Because uh, night, education of night, 10 years long period. It's possible even the, one, the first battle killed the night, 10 years effort expired. Expire. Moreover, the expense of uh, night, no, night is not one person, not one person. A night, one unit of arm, unit of uh, army, with, uh, for example, the key person, of course, the knight, but there is a servant around him and a lot of different horses. Only one or two battle horse, but other horses for transporting the weapons and, and the servant and so and so. It's very expensive, very expensive. Uh, infantry is very cheap. One person with muskets or pike. And uh, uh, very cheap construction. During the Middle Ages, uh, heavy cavalry dominated the battlefields. It's very expensive. It's possible you play on the different video games a strategic uh, game. It's very simple. In the, some years ago, I, I used this form of the game. But if you occupy a territory, increase the army. Normal situation. Therefore, the potential power of army depends on the region and the, uh, and the uh, capacity of the tax production. In the case of infantry, almost independent, because very, very cheap. And in the modern times, four famous infantry founded. The Spanish musketeers. This was the first one. Why? Because you remember, in the case of Spanish history, a huge chain of soldier family professionalized to the, uh, uh, to the war. The second one, a German pikeman, for similar reason, Swiss halberdier, you know the Swiss halberdier, it's a mountain people, mountain people, very poor people, because the halberdier, it's a typical decent weapon, like the Swiss officer, uh, uh, how the knife, you know, there is a lot of devices. The halberdier, on the case of halberdier, there is a three devices, a axe, a pike, and a hoof. Three on one device. Because, and very efficient, very efficient, uh, Swiss halberdier. Swiss halberdier, very famous soldier and the merc uh, mercenaries on his time. It's possible, you know, who are the bodyguard of Pope? Swiss Halberdier. Swiss Halberdier. Since the uh, 16th century. And the Turkish Janissaries. A Turkish Janissary, this was one uh, famous infantry uh, out of, uh, of uh, uh, Christendom. Okay. And the first battle which won infantry against the heavy cavalry was between the French and the Spanish uh, army in uh, Pavia. Uh, happened 1526 uh, in the late February. This was the first battle which the, uh, the infantry with uh, uh, muskets, uh, musketers, uh, won. And uh, the contemporaries drawn about this uh, battle that uh, rode uh, the heavy cavalry, the knights, against the line of the Spanish musketers. And uh, from very near, fire 
uh, uh, Spanish muscaters and the bullet it's through the first uh, uh, night and stop on the second one. And this is the turning point, even now, even the modern time, when our firearms and the infantry became the key actors of the battlefields. Okay, look at the geographical discoveries a little bit closer. Uh, the most important country of geographical, European geographical discoveries was one peripheral country. Look at, this is the Portugal. It's quite a peripheral. If we are looking at European civilization, it's a very, very peripheral country. Which advantage, which uh, uh, regional power have a Portuguese for discoveries? Okay, uh, a reconquest of Portugal uh, closed even much before the Spanish reconquest, uh, even in the middle of 13th century. And a very important person in the uh, Portuguese uh, discoveries are uh, Henry the Navigator. Henry the Navigator was a son of John the I, Portuguese king. Why so important? because he was a member of royal family first and secondly no chance to be a king because before you had two uh, brothers and uh, the third important milestone capture, cap, cap, key capture conquest of Celta this is the most southern part of Portugal and this is the ruling here of John II, the most important king who organized the Portuguese discoveries. Look at the key person, Henry the Navigator. Henry the Navigator, key person in the Portugal and the larger uh, overview in the European discoveries. Why? He was the third uh, child of King, the, uh, king John I of Portugal. As I mentioned before, it's uh, very important uh, because he had to find uh, other profession than the ruling. Other profession, which is the normal option for a prince, became a general, a general, a military leader. Other option became a bishop or archbishop. It's an important position of the Roman Catholic Church. But very strange. A uh, Henry the Navigator didn't interested for military campaign or never for for, for religious uh, uh, religious uh, problem or task, but he interested for sciences. It's quite strange. It's unusual in the in the uh, late Middle Ages, but he was. It's a very special uh, direction of interest. But he was a member of royal family. Therefore, for him had a large castle and large royal budget. And he applied a large royal budget for scientific operation. He was the first big data maker of European scientific or general history. How? He had a large castle which saved uh, bodyguards, uh, Villa do Infante, in the most southern part of Portugal. Uh, he tried to uh, use his uh, uh, royal budget for trade and he participated in the North African trade, making some profit, supporting for uh, discovery trade, discovery travel. Very important in his operation, the legend of Christian Prester John. Somebody know the legend of Prester John? It was a contemporary legend uh, which told about uh, a Christian kingdom behind and very far from, the, from Europe. It's, uh, uh, for example, uh, tell the story about the Prester John's uh, uh, kingdom in Siberia, Prester John kingdom in Amazonia, Prester John kingdom in Central Africa. It's a legend. It was a legend, but motivated uh, that find uh, Christians who are living far from the uh, from the from the European Christendom and saving them. 
there is uh, some uh, real uh, seed of the legend because in the case of Ethiopia, Ethiopia in the eastern part of Africa, it's quite a close to, the, to this story because Ethiopia and the Ethiopian Christian community lived behind the Muslim uh, area and, uh, and uh, the uh, Portuguese massacres later in the early Middle Ages have of survival of Ethiopian kingdom. Okay, and finally, uh, Henry the Navigator sponsored the voyages and the travel on the east, on the east, not western African uh, coastal area, and uh, uh, and uh, and uh, uh, collected the log books as I mentioned and copied uh, information from the log books about the direction of wind and the direction of uh, the ocean currents. It's very important because, you know, the in increase the number of information, information, information number. It was a huge fortune for the Portuguese because the Portuguese had the best database about nature of ocean, wind and currents. Uh, why is so important the role of, uh, of uh, Portugal in the geographical discoveries? Uh, look at uh, 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 our uh, concept on the on the matrix of SWOT analysis because I, I suppose majority of the students know uh, the SWOT analysis. It's quite a simple, a simple but useful uh, useful uh, frame of uh, judging and the plan uh, uh, making uh, plan uh, plan making uh, methodology. Uh, probably you know, introduced by Alfred, Albert Humphrey uh, in the middle of the uh, uh, 20th century and used even now on the personal management to the enterprise management in different level and different version. But look at the historical problem, apply to the historical problem, uh, SWOT analysis. Uh, this is the basic matrix of the SWOT analysis. Uh, if uh, we, we would like to judge uh, the, the role of different uh, circumstances, uh, uh, there are helpful, helpful, harmful, internal origin, external origin, uh, strengths, weakness, opportunities, and the threats. Good. Look at Portugal according to four aspects, which were the most important strengths of Portugal, who uh, is a pilot country of geographical discoveries, weakness, opportunities, and the threats. If we are looking autonomous power, autonomous power, uh, look at the situation of the China. In the case of China, it's an empire, huge empire, which follow the imperial interest. If decrease and start the financial crisis, canceling the most expensive uh, items from, from the governmental budget. And the geographical discoveries expire a lot of money, cancel. Uh, Portugal, ocean-oriented country. Therefore, for this country, very important, the maritime trade. <coughs> Therefore, autonomous power, autonomous power, it's very important. Why? Because in the uh, early Middle Ages, the invasion of Ottoman Empire was a European all European problem. And if, for example, looking at Chinese situation, China, on the same time, a Manchu, a Manchu kingdom, it's attacked a Chinese empire, which was the decision of the Chinese emperor, turn empire to the direction of saving of Great Wall and canceling any maritime operation. Same situation in Europe. Uh, Turkish Empire occupied in the middle of uh, uh, 15th century Constantinople, this recently Istanbul, occupied a Serbian principality, occupied uh, Romanian principalities, occupied majority of Hungary, and stopped near to the border of Austria. But the most important ambition of the Ottoman Empire, occupation, all of Europe, all of Europe. In this situation, if Europe, a unified empire, each of military power 
turned over the Ottoman Empire, even Portugal, but Europe no integrated empire. Therefore, each country, each region followed his regional interest. Therefore, Ottoman invasion became regional problem. A Polish kingdom and the Czech area, Austria, invested huge money for saving Central Europe, but the Portugal not. Portugal follow his personal and uh, uh, county interest. It's a pro-Portugal was. Autonomous power, developed economy, very important, it's possible you remember, a Muslim empire in the late Middle Ages more developed than Europe. Therefore, it's a, in the, you can use a sport, for example. If you would like, to, you would like, for example, develop in sport, football or chess or everything, you have to play with player a little bit better than you. Because you can develop if you play with one person or one community is better than you. Uh, this was the situation in Portugal. Trading with Muslim countries is better than Portugal. And develop, pull up the Portuguese economy. Large fleet. You can see a large and long coastal area, a lot, lot of local ports, and large fleet, a lot of well-educated sailors. If some, for example, one after one disaster of ships and, and, and uh, death of sailor, very easy to recover. Look at the weakness. Very far from the central part of European world economy. Where is the where were the European world economy? Northern Poles, Low Country, and Italy. Very far, very far, far. Opportunity, openness toward the ocean. Therefore, for Portuguese people, ocean. This is the homeland. Ocean is a homeland. But it's for 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 example, uh, I am a Hungarian. Uh, I remember the first impression when I meet first time with the ocean. I'm afraid. <laughs> it's a very strange situation. A little bit same uh, because I spent my childhood a plain Hungarian plain area. Hungarian plain area. I remember when I received my first uh, fellowship to Switzerland. It's a mountain area. I remember opened my window in the student hostel no open horizon. I felt claustrophobic. I am in a closed place, a closed place. Because it's a very important the socialization. If somebody socialized somewhere, it's a fingerprint all of the life. Okay, but turn back to the story. Openness toward the ocean. Uh, and very important opportunity. Rivals of Venice, rivals of Venetia, and the loser of competition, Florentine and Genoese merchant, who no chance rivalry with the Venetian trader eastern part of the Mediterranean Sea, emigrated to western part of Mediterranean Sea and invested to Spanish and Portuguese enterprises. Third, Islamic State, Islam why? Because Iberian Peninsula for five and seven years long, seven hundred years long period, was a part of Muslim world, and continuously was a, a, a threat. We'll come back. The Muslim will come back and militarize somehow. Uh, it's Muslim, it's uh, Iberia state, and forming Spain, a big brother, Portuguese, Portugal, compared with the uh, uh, compared with the Spain, a small brother. And some period, it was a real threat, and Spain occupied and conquered temporary uh, Portugal. Okay, but uh, no. good. Look at the Portugal. Look at the Portuguese maritime empire. If we are looking at uh, Portuguese maritime empire, this is the first one. It's a caravan trade routes in the uh, Sahara Desert and this is the uh, coastal sailing 
uh, way of on the on the northern African country, and uh, this is the uh, direction of ocean currents. Ocean currents, I no, 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 wind, wind direction, wind direction on the African country, which collected by uh, maps of uh, Henry the Navigator. The most important African trade was a god, was a god. I spoke Galer di Trafego in the case of, uh, in the case of uh, Venetian trade. The second one, slave. This is the weak point of African society, a slavery, a slavery. Why? Because the slavery, it's, it's a real and existing institution of uh, African society. And this is the weakest point, and this was the, the key factor of colonizer uh, for colonizing of coastal area of Africa. Ivory, ivory, not by chance, the gate of European trade, it's Bay of Guinea, named the Golden Coast, Ivory Coast, and the Slave Coast. It's, these were the most important. Uh, products of African trade. If we are looking at uh, Portuguese maritime trade, you can identify focus size to Africa. It's sailing uh, on the coastal area of Africa, sail directly to the Spice Island and occupation of Brazil. Occupation of Brazil in southern part of America. If we are looking at uh, number of Portuguese ships uh, between uh, between uh, Afri between uh, Indian Ocean and the back, this was the first uh, at the beginning of 16th century. But we can continue the continuous presence in the European African trade and Indian Ocean trade. The key city of uh, key city of uh, long distance trade is Lisbon. It's an excellent place for trade, ideal uh, for sailing the port of, uh, of Lisbon. Look at one short movie of... Uh, which was the most important condition for seizing of spice trade, which produced the highest uh, fortune of contemporary trade. Uh, finding a direct maritime trade if possible, you remember how organized the Venetian trade. Venetian trade, Venetian spice trade, a chain trade was, produced the spice island on the Indian Ocean. Muslim trader, both the spice and the spices, transported to Alexandria or the city of Near East and uh, uh, sold to the Venetian trader. Therefore, chain trade. And the most important innovation of Portuguese sailor sailing directly to the Venetian Spice Island and decrease the expense of the chain trade because each merchant, each trader would like to earn some money for, for trading, therefore decrease. Moreover, the, the expense of continental trade is very high. Maritime trade decrease the expense of the trade, increase the profit rate, of course. The second one, precious metal. The most important uh, uh, trader of precious metal was the German trader, a German trader. The trader of Augsburg, Nuremberg, uh, mainly in the southern Germany. Therefore, a Portuguese trader, because the key of Eastern spice, the precious metal, European trader necessarily pay with precious metal, somehow a Portuguese trader and the German trader who organized the mining of precious metal in Europe somehow had to collaborate. And commercial network of distribution was in the case in the in the in the hand of German trader. Therefore, German trader served a precious metal for international trade and the regional network of distribution. If possible, two trading network developed in medieval Europe. And one trading network organized by German trader and the other one organized by Jews trader. You remember the segregated uh, uh, district of, of Venice, 
Jews and the German. Rivalry between these folks very early and started even in the Middle Ages. Okay, and the city which was the meeting point with the, between the German and the Portuguese was Antwerp. Was Antwerp. A new leading city, Antwerp, after the decline of the Venice, no Lisbon, no this famous city. Why? Because Portuguese not, wasn't enough power for organizing a distribution of space. And Antwerp, like, for example, Champagne Brie, located halfway between Portugal and Germany, <coughs> southern Germany. Antwerp, it's a, a lot of innovation and a one, lot of innovation on the time of domination of Antwerp, population of Antwerp double, location, located excellent place on the coastal area of Northern Sea, and uh, uh, which were the most important uh, peculiarity and innovation and advantages of Antwerp. Uh, continue a heritage of Bruges and Venice uh, on the same time, located on the port of Shelt River. This was a port of Northern Sea and a river connecting the continental background. Commercial tradition of Low Country and crossroads to the Northern Scandinavian and Central European trade. Quasi independent country. Uh, probably you remember in the example of Champagne Brie, the trader, merchant, and businessman don't like and didn't like never a strong political power. A strong political power. Therefore, found the place no strong political power. Therefore, Brabant, this is the county behind the Antwerp, quasi independent county, is a part of Holy Roman Empire, but the emperor is far, not real local power. Therefore, it's a weak political power. And uh, it was a traditional port of key persons, German merchant houses, fuggers, invasors. And very important, a religion, religious toleration. If we are looking a commercial, even though, even recently, the leading cities of international trade, one of the most important fingerprint indicator a religious toleration. And the low country is a historical, historically even now, is a part and the region of religious toleration. Why? Because if uh, some, no hospitality for far uh, arrive trader, no any uh, motivation uh, sailing or traveling to this place, and uh, if not, no, no a feeling of toleration, don't like to live in this area. Therefore, uh, for example, a good indicator of decline uh, are intoleration. intoleration. If some region appears in toleration, it's, it's very reliable. 100% reliable indicator of decline, economic decline, not only uh, social decline. And very interesting place because the dwellers, inhabitants of Antwerp didn't participate in the trade, didn't participate in the economic life. Therefore, Antwerp became a playground of foreigners, Portuguese and the Germans. Okay. Thanks a lot for your attention.